Hey everybody, how's it going? Christian from Treasure Town here, and today we are talking about the junk that you need to avoid with coins. Now, this is something I see a lot. They prey on newer collectors. There's so much marketing that goes into these sorts of items, and uh, you know what I'm going to show you is a coin collection that somebody paid extremely high amounts for, and of course, when they went to sell it to coin dealers, the coin dealers fairly paid them very little for it compared to what they originally put into it. So this is something that makes me a little bit aggravated. I ended up buying some of it at a small margin ahead of the coin dealer. But I mean, this is this is the sort of thing that's super important for everybody there to know because I have seen so many times where people have spent thousands of dollars on coins that are worth um, hundreds or tens of dollars. So um, let's get into the video. I'm gonna show you this collection that I have a lot of sprayed out across the ground so that you have an idea for what to avoid when you're beginning or continuing with your coin collections. Or if you've already done it, um, you can wise up. It's not always the most fun thing to do, but um, this kind of stuff is stuff I might have bought you know, a little while ago when I was really beginning the journey in coins not knowing any better. Um, now I have a different approach. And here we have, I'm not going to call it carnage, but a lot of the materials that I'm going to tell you, and it's not including the dog food, um, that I would recommend that you not buy. Though if you don't have a dog, no reason to buy that. But we'll start over here and we'll move our way across. But the main theme that you will see is that there's a ton of non-coin kind of presentation materials that maybe people justify charging a really high amount of money for. So let's check out this book, 100 Years of Lincoln Coins and Stamps, 1909 to 2009. I think there's a 1922 Dean here, but I'm sure they overcharge massively. But I mean, this is nice. It's cool. Look, the legacy of Abraham Lincoln. If you really like him, if you want to pay for this, by all means, people, you know, people clearly have or else these, uh, you know, the producer of this would not have been able to make this and sell it. But you know, they have born in a log cabin and they put in a stamp. It's a lot of kind of artistic presentation stuff, but the coins themselves are really not in great condition. Um, they're always the worst dates. You know, these stamps, not going to be extremely rare stuff either. Um, you know, we, as, as we get down here, you know, there's one for each year. It's a huge amount of plastic. I'm not even talking about the, you know, the environmental is not why I'm, the reason I made this video, but I mean, this is a really bulky thing to collect. Um, and you know, this 1922 is probably the only valuable coin in this whole set. Um, and it's nice. I mean, you can learn about this stuff, but you could probably also watch a documentary, really interesting stuff, and then put this all in a coin folder. Plus circulated Lincoln cents is a really fun collection and one that I did. That's what I did when I started that out. But that sort of thing does not resell too well to, especially not to coin dealers, just cause it's relatively common stuff. Um, then something like this, it's a pain to ship even. So coin dealers, and it takes up a lot of storage space. People are gonna not pay very much. And then you get down here and it's like, you know, kind of uncirculated pennies. Um, you know, maybe there's some value in, in uh, you know, maybe I should use all these stamps and put them on envelopes, that sort of thing. But that's kind of the first thing. And we probably spent too much time on that already. Then we have the US Buffalo nickel collector panels. Same thing. I mean, it's nice that these coins, 1919, but the price that would these would sell if it was just the coins themselves, and these are like the best items in the slot probably, is far lower than when you can put a whole book around it and sell it for a very high amount. I would say the best item in this group is probably this one because there's a silver dollar in it, but I guarantee you that this was not purchased for you know, basically the value of that, uh, they were able to squeeze in, let's see, 1909 Weed Ears Memorial Log Cabin, then a quarter. I mean, all that stuff is just value add to them that, that the company is able to charge a lot for. Um, even something like this, these two items. <laughs> the Danbury Mint, 50th anniversary. Whoa, there's a spider right there. Let's see. Let me try to get that out of the way. I want that in my coins. All right, forget about it. Danbury Mint has made this rare collector roll. I wonder what somebody paid for it, but we've got, it's not even mint package, just 2014, bunch of 2014 P. Kennedys in a roll, call it the 50th anniversary. 
that is, you know, a coin dealership paid 25 bucks for it, and I paid like 25.50, because that's how the, you know, that's how that operates. Five cent complete coin collection. Again, nice presentation case. You get to see all these different kinds of nickels, but, you know, it's not being sold for 10 or 15 bucks. They're not going to ship this to you for, you can't ship this for 10 or 15 dollars. Maybe you can if you're Amazon or something. But all these sorts of things, really high, this is kind of cool. Um, missing edge lettering, I think. Nice little PCGS coin, but stuff is not being sold for market value. It's being sold to people who don't know what they're looking at, and the coins are kind of flashy, and then you're left with not very much. I mean, here's a fun little folder, but the price spent putting this together, according to the person who sold it to the coin shop, was a lot more than a tiny bit over face value. Let's move on over here. I mean, this sort of thing, again, super cool. I have one of these in the back of my videos, so I even bought one of these. But this, you know, it's all just marketing stuff, and the more plastic surrounding the coins, like for this coin, the more plastic and infographic stuff, the more that these companies can charge, and there's probably, you know, it's to cover up that coin's worth like a dollar fifty, probably. Same thing over here. All these proof Kennedy half dollars. This is kind of a big item. You know, it's all these mint sets, but like, you don't you don't get the original packaging when you're trying to resell. You know, each one of these years. You know, there's a little bit of silver here, but cost a, a lot more than you know if you got every single one of these in original mint packaging with the box. You know, same thing on these unk sets. You know, it's just kind of carnage when they go to resell. And I would argue that owning some really nice individual coins is a much better play. Another point here. This one's important. All these slab coins right here. These are not, this is not a grading company. There's not even a grade on this. Just says authenticated. I mean, nobody's faking the 1991 half dollar. You know, this, this. Yeah, nobody's, I doubt that there's a lookup for that. If there was, you know, wow. But um, th there's no added value from being put in a holder that's not, you know, even a fourth tier grading company, at least they're giving an opinion on the grade. This is just telling you, you know, it's, co it's common circulating change and it's authenticated and you have, you know, I don't know if this is a hundred coins or how many it is, but look at all those coins. And probably they were being sold for like four or five bucks each. I don't know exactly the number, but a lot. I've been, you know, I looked through these when I bought them, but let's see what this is. Important first edition U.S. coins. Actually, maybe there's some, but like the, yeah, the No Sense 1883 nickel. And this is a fun presentation set, but you can make this stuff yourself and not pay, you know, I bet this sheet was factored in at five or ten bucks for a, 10 cent coin or the silver Roosevelt dime 1946. It's all about ascribing rarity to things that really are not rare. And somebody says, hey, you know, it's got to be a good investment because it's coins. You know, maybe there's a little silver. Maybe there's, you know, they're saying it's a first date 1964 or wow, 50th anniversary. I've never heard somebody talk about the 50th anniversary of the, I mean, the mint likes to do anniversary stuff. They didn't even do anything. For the 50th anniversary so then you have a mint here rolling up a, a thing of these probably selling it over tv when this is worth exactly 25 bucks i mean maybe maybe a collector would pay 34 it's kind of fun but not really i mean you i, I bet that that was sold for like 70 dollars or something something astronomical in relation to the total value so this is like the worst of the worst in terms of if you're not going to buy fake coins this is probably the next best way to squander buying coins. And again, not to offend people who've done it, but I mean, you have to think about how you have an exit plan with your coins. If this is what you love, by all means, go for it because you can't place a dollar value on happiness. But I think, I think you can be a lot happier collecting a lot more rare stuff than buying. I don't know what this would have cost, but... You could you could pick up all of the Kennedy proofs here, and then go buy yourself a Morgan dollar or something for the, what you would have spent 
on this and it's probably a much bigger difference between the two so anyways that concludes it or you can buy it like me for hardly anything above the face value on the spot price and then enjoy it and that's a good way to do it you know you can buy this stuff if you're buying it right especially if you like it but i mean this is going to be a very challenging thing to get rid of and just like the textbook example of the sort of thing that gets thrown on tv and i want you guys to make sure to avoid thanks for watching the video i'd encourage you to like comment and definitely subscribe to the channel and connect with me on facebook instagram and twitter I also have a website, treasuretownyt.com, where you should go so that you can learn more about coins as well as what's happening on the channel and possibly find a place to sell your coins and collectibles. I also want to talk about some of my other projects like coinmeltprice.com, which shows precious metals prices as well as the melt values of coins containing those precious metals, both U.S. and world. I also have coinsmetalscards.com, which will develop into a full marketplace, as well as a new source for coins, metals, cards, as the name might suggest. And then treasuretowncoins.com, which long-term will be my coin dealing entity separate from the channel. And lastly, whatsthegrade.com, which will be a stickering service for already certified collectibles, where you can get a approval or verification of the grade on the holder. Hope you have a wonderful day, and I look forward to seeing you on some of my other videos.